Okay, in this problem we're going to be talking about forces acting upon an object and we're going to determine a net force and a net acceleration. So the problem reads as follows. A 10 kilogram box is pulled along a frictionless surface by two ropes that are parallel to the plane of the floor. The ropes are each pulled with a magnitude of 100 newtons. The angle between the ropes is 60 degrees and they are symmetrical along the due east axis. Find the net force on the box and to the net acceleration along the box. So here's our box down here. These are the two forces. And I'm going to make this the east axis. So the first thing I need to do in this case is I need to label my compass over here. So I'm going to label north, south, east, and west like this. Okay. So now I have an axis or I have a, an orientation that I can define uh, as a reference point all the time. So this is the first force here. So this force here is going to be the force uh, force of A, let's just call it force applied of A, or just force of A. And the magnitude of that is going to be 100 newtons. And this force down here, uh, we're going to call this uh, force B, let's just call it. This is going to be 100 newtons down here. They're both tension forces. They're both being pulled away uh, with ropes. But I'm just going to call them force A, force B, just to keep it simple. It tells us that the angle between these two is 60 degrees uh, and it's symmetrical about this axis right here. So the way that we're looking at this object is we're looking down on it as if we're looking from a top view looking down upon the floor and it's being pulled like this east uh, along the floor. So this is a 10 kilogram box right here. So I put my mass right there. And so now I need to begin to break down these forces into their components because I want to know what is the net force acting on this box as it's being pulled along here. Well, we know since it's symmetrical, we're going to have uh, similar angles here, or exact angles here between the east axis and each force. So this one's going to be 30 degrees here, and this one's going to be 30 degrees down. Because again, these add up to 60 degrees and they're symmetrical about the east axis here. Okay. So now what I have to do is I need to break these into their components. So I need to take this force applied here and break it into its x coordinates and its y coordinates like this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that down here just so you can see both diagrams like this. Okay. So my force applied here just once again was 100 newtons and this was 30 degrees like this. So I'm going to have to draw both of my components here. So I'm going to draw one up like this. So this is going to be my force of A in the y direction. Okay, and that's just simply going to be 100 sine 30. Okay, and I have to draw one of them going in this direction here. So my force along the x direction is going to be force of A x is 100 cosine 30. Now I need to deal with my uh, force in the B. So I'm going to write here force B equals 100 newtons. And I have to break it into its components again. So I'm going to put the Y component down here like this. So this is the force B in the Y. And that's going to equal, again, 100 sine 30. And then I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to draw this out again here along this axis here. So these are going to roughly be the same length, or exactly the same length here. So this is going to be FB, and the X is going to be 100 cosine 30 also. So I've drawn the components out here now. Now I need to eliminate the original force here. And I have all components here along the, the, the Y and along the X. Okay. And again, I'm using north, south, east, and west, but you know the default is here that this would be equivalent to my x, and this would be equivalent to my y. So this is just why I've drawn this in terms of x, x, and y in this case. Uh, we do have a net force here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this box here, and I'm going to put it over here just to show you Newton's second law. I have a net force going in this direction. So I'm going to draw it like this. It's going to go all the way out like this to try to make it a about the same as these two, more or less the same as these two. Like this, okay. So when I draw Newton's second law underneath it, I'm going to have down here, 
my x direction and my y direction, but I'm going to start with my x direction first here. I'm going to say the sum of the forces in the x direction equals f net. So we can understand this now vectorially from this picture because all of my x direction components and forces are pointing in this direction and this is my net force. So this is Newton's second law from the diagram here. So we can say here that uh, FAX plus FBX is simply going to equal F net. And I'm just kind of, F net and the X, I'm just going to kind of combine those so you can see them. I'm going to group them together here. And the next equation that we're going to have is simply going to say the sum of the forces in the y direction are going to equal zero. So the force A along the y minus the force B in the y is going to equal zero because this one's going up, this one's going down. Or I could just have set them equal from the beginning. I can say whatever is up equals whatever is down because they are equal and opposite in magnitude. Okay. What you're going to end up seeing here basically is that these two components, uh, the up component and the down component, they basically negate each other. They cancel each other out. And the net component here is going to be along the x direction. And that's, that's basically what's going to happen. Uh, the smaller that this angle is, the more that these two forces work together. The larger that this angle is, the less that they work together. So that's all this equation is saying here. Uh, you know, regarding the first point, is that the the force in the, the force of A along the y equals the force of B along the y, and we can use this to substitute into this equation here. So sum of the force in the x that's equation one, sum of the force in the y that's equation two, and now we want to begin to solve for um, these components here. So I know that if I write out these equations a little bit more detailed. I'm going to have force of A cosine 30 plus force of B cosine 30 equals F net in the X. Okay, like this. I'm going to move these down just a little bit here. Okay. And I know that if I wrote this equation down here a little bit further, I would see that I would have f of a sine of 30 equals f of b sine of 30. Okay. So by looking at those equations, you can cancel out the signs. They're just going to go away. So the force of a equals the force of b, which is what we knew before, basically. Okay. I'm just proving what we did before. Once again, we knew that they were equal in magnitudes. So I can plug this in to any of these up here. Okay, so if I go equation 2 into equation 1, okay, so equation 2 into equation 1, like this, I'm going to take this force and plug it into uh, this equation up here. So force of A equals force of B. So the force of B, I can, just I can just plug that into that and make it force of A. So once I do that, I'm going to get force of A cosine 30 plus, and instead of force B cosine 30, right, that was what these two components were, right, I'm just going to have FA cosine 30 again, and that's going to equal F net in that direction, okay, and now I just end up with a very simple example here of 2 times FA cosine 30 equals F net, and again this is all in the X direction, so I'm just going to make sure, just to remind you, I'm going to put the X there, okay. So what does F net X equal? Well F net X is going to equal 2 times FA, so 2 times FA was 100, 100, and cosine 30 is going to be root 3 over 2, right, and the 2's are going to cancel, so my F net in the X direction is going to equal 100 times root 3 newtons like that. Okay, So that's my F net in the x direction. It just it, 
also turns out that this is just the net force because there's no net force in the y direction. Uh, there's no, you see right here the sum of the forces in the y was zero. So my net force is just whatever the x is here. And so if I wrote out the final force here, so I would say the force net is going to be 100 root 3 newtons and it's going to be facing due east. So now I've answered the part in number one, asking for the net force acting on that object. And the final part of that question asked for the net acceleration, right? So the net acceleration of the box uh, is going to follow the same path as the net force on the box, okay? Because my net force on the box is related to the net acceleration. Remember, force net equals MA net, so they're almost the same thing. So all I have to do is divide by the mass and I get acceleration. So if we know that F net equals M A net, and these both point in the same direction because acceleration gives the forces direction, right? I know that my net acceleration along the X, in this case it's also just the net acceleration, is going to equal the F net over the mass. So in this case we're going to have 100 root 3, which is F net, the magnitude of the net force, right? Divided by the mass in this case, which is just 10 kilograms. So it's going to give me a net acceleration of 10 root 3 meters per second squared. If I just wrote it out again as the complete net acceleration, I would say acceleration net equals 10 root 3 meters per second squared, and this is going to be due east just like the force because that's pointing along the same axis as the force. So they're very similar. Uh, they point in the same direction and the acceleration gives the force its direction so that's why they have the same direction. They have slightly different magnitudes just because we had to divide by the mass. Okay, So once again I had a object here that was being pulled by two different forces and these two different forces were, were symmetric uh, about the east direction. Okay, it was 60 degrees, so I broke them into 30 and 30. Uh, once you wrote out the components, the two Y components cancel each other out, and the two X components were working together. So the cosine of this is the projection along this axis, and they worked together. Okay, the sine components canceled out, and these two working together created this net force. I wrote Newton's uh, second law here, sum of the forces in the X equals F net. And again, that's represented on these pictures. That's the sum of the forces. That's F net. We wrote out the X uh, system of equations here, so we said F of A of X plus F of B of X equals F net in the X, and that turned into F A cosine 30 plus F B cosine 30 equals F net in the X. And we, we went ahead and wrote out the Y equation just for completeness, uh, but we really didn't need to do that because we knew that F of A equals F of B, but I just wrote it out just to show you that the signs will cancel and it's just proving that F of A equals F of B in that particular uh, example. We substituted it back in. I combined them to be 2 F A cosine 30 equals F net X. I substituted in the values so the net and the X was 100 root 3 newtons and then we said that it was the net force was also the X force and it was 100 root 3 newtons due east. And then the final part of the question asked for the acceleration and we just took the net force divided it by the mass and we got 10 root 3 meters per second squared and that's also due east because it points in the same direction as the force. Alright, that's all I got for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.